Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Well, this is the second installment of a series that I was inspired to do by request from YouTubers. And the last one was about winter feeder birds of the northern tier states and Canadian provinces. And, uh, of course, people started chiming in and says, please do one for our region. Please do one for our region. So today's installment is winter birds of the southeast of the U.S. And having grown up there, these are birds that are near and dear to my heart. And remember that the, the premise of this program is not to cover the common feeder birds. Well, I've done many videos on cardinals and blue jays and red-bellied woodpeckers and downy woodpeckers and uh, the, the birds that are very, very widespread through the central part, especially of the United States. But the idea here is to focus on some of the more unique birds in the different regions of the country. And yes, you guys out west, I'm coming to you here in, in the coming weeks. So this is, you know, feeder birds in the winter in the southeastern U.S. that are a little different. So uh, the first one I'm going to talk about, and you, people would <laughs> look at me and go, uh, wait a minute, they're everywhere. No, this is the Carolina chickadee. I most often talk about the black cap chickadee, which is which is more central and northern in nature. Uh, the in the southern U.S., uh, Carolina chickadees uh, dominate, and people go, wait a minute, how do you tell them apart? They look that looks just like a black cap chickadee. Well, there's subtle differences, that's for sure, um, and the, uh, the 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 best way to tell them, of course, is by their call. So when you hear them, they sound like this. Now, with the black cap chickadees that we're most familiar, they go seesaw. But as you can hear, the Carolina chickadee, we always said when I the way I learned it was Carolina. So uh, the call is definitely different, but there are subtle differences. The white in uh, the wings is much more subdued in a Carolina chickadee, and the nape uh, is grayer in a, in a ch Carolina chickadee. But just know, if you live in the southern part of the, the country, uh, you know, Carolina chickadees are the ones that come to you, and they are very bold. They're very smart. You know, chickadees are the smartest little birds and bravest. And they're the ones that are, I've always said, are going to find your bird feeders first. If you, uh, when you put up a new bird feeder station, they're you likely the, the ones that are going to find it. And then the other birds will come in after them. So Carolina chickadees uh, is, is number one when it comes to those, uh, the birds of the South and winter at your bird feeders for me. Uh, another favorite is the little tiny brown headed nuthatch. Now the white breasted nuthatch is much, much more wide spread and the red breasted nuthatch we talked about for the northern states there's more northern in nature and yes they can invade into the south but the the brown headed nuthatch doesn't move very much so it's pretty sedentary in areas of the south and they you know they're a bird of the piney woods of the south and they are wonderful little guys i mean they have the little ee -ee 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 squeaky toy sound and they come in very quickly and they leave very quickly and you can attract them into nest boxes or little tiny entrance holes for them um uh, their favorite my my brother who lived in uh, Charlotte, the last few, several years, uh, it was one of his favorite birds that came to his feeder in that area. And yes, they eat suet, they eat peanuts, they eat sunflower hearts. Uh, they, so they're just a classic bird of the Southeast, in my mind. They're definitely a bird of, bird of the Piney Woods Forest, and that's going to be kind of a theme for the Southeast. Uh, probably the common sparrow down there in, in winter uh, is the chipping sparrow. They, they, they're they real rufous or magenta cap. Um, and other sparrows, I know there are other sparrows that they're down there in winter. The, and many of the common ones like white-throated sparrows, that, which is nest up north and, and moves down into the south. But for the, the to me, the symbolic uh, sparrow of the southeast is, is the chipping sparrow. We lose them uh, and up here in Kansas City in the winter and they move uh, not very far south, but they move south. So uh, that's that is my example of the sparrows that visit you in the, uh, in the southeastern U.S. And then you know, two birds that are very, very famous in the south. Matter of fact, they between the two of them, they make up a lot of the, the state birds of the southern states, the brown thrasher and the northern mockingbird. They are both uh, members of the mimic thrush family. They are related, uh, and they 
they're not classic feeder birds, but they will come in. I, I whenever I used to feed the the mockingbirds in North Carolina, I made a mixture of that peanut butter and cornmeal, or peanut butter and and fine chips, and I'd put some dried mealworms in it, things like that, and stuff it in a pine cone or uh, a smeared situation where they, they can't, because they're not typical feeder birds, or they don't, they're not used to negotiating perches and things like that. Um, they typically are on the ground under your feeder, especially the thrasher. Uh, is the, they, the built name comes from the way they thrash that bill, and they thrash the soil, uh, and, and, and they'll do that with, with certain bird seed under the area. So two classic birds right there, uh, that you know, a lot of them live in the south, and, and but there's, there'll be more thrashers there that move down from the northern states and get pushed south in the winter. So two birds of the of the southeastern United States when it comes to the winter. Uh, here's one that's really unique, um, and and that is this is an eastern towhee. Yes, we have eastern towhees uh, all through the the central two thirds eastern two thirds of the United States, and of course we have spotted towhees out west. But the eastern towhee that we have in our area, uh, it, it and they mo migrate and move south in the winter, has a red eye. This is a unique subspecies to especially Florida and uh, in, in, in parts of Georgia and that and the southern, the southern east, south, really southeastern area. This uh, this eastern towhee has a white iris, which is really unique, and you guys down there get to enjoy that that we don't get to see up here in, in this part of the world. So a very unique member of your your community down there is this the white-eyed subspecies of the eastern towhee. And again, they're mostly under the ground and scratching at the seed and under the bushes near your feeders and things like that. Uh, that they're not uh, the, like a fence or anything that clings to a feeder. They, but they're going to be down on the ground underneath there. And a, and they're really tiny ruby crown kinglet. Now, again, not a classic feeder birds, but there are a lot of these in the southeast in the winter months. Uh, they uh, they migrate through here, and we still have some in our area right now, but they're headed down into the southeast. And they do visit sometimes suet, uh, especially if it's smeared on the side of the tree and in the bark of a tree. And I, I always call them the little pinballs because they're just bounce. Man, they just bounce all over the place. Very, very active, cute little birds, uh, but you have a lot of them in the southeast during the winter. And maybe if you're not at your feeder, always be looking in the in your bushes and your trees in your backyard. You'll usually find them in the winter months. And another good example of that, uh, it's the same thing, is this the yellow rumped warbler. Uh, the species, subspecies that occurs in the southeastern U.S. is called the myrtle warbler. Uh, and the western species out in California in the western part of the states is the Audubon warbler. Where they, but they're both technically the yellow rumped warbler. And these guys spend the winter in the coastal, especially scrub areas, of uh, all on the southeastern coast where they had the myr wax myrtle bushes and that's where the name came from for myrtle warbler and they eat the berries and they and, and there's always insects and in, in down there in that part of the world in the winter months but i i know several of you uh at check in with me in the winter months that you have these visiting feeders and 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 we occasionally will see them visit uh, up in this part of the world, especially in migration. They may hit a fine sunflower chip feeder. Uh, they Again, they can't crack open a seed. They're like the bluebirds. They can't crack open a seed. Uh, but if there's whole a seed and little pieces of peanuts, they can eat that. And I know down in the winter, uh, I, I've got some uh, YouTube people that report they have them in their, uh, at their feeders during the winter months down there in the extreme southeast. And they'll eat suet. Uh, as well as uh, maybe, a, maybe a peanut butter mixture, but also the holest seed they, they can be drawn to that. And another member of that family that will do the same thing is the pine warbler. Uh, the pine warbler, again, the southeastern U.S. is loaded with pine trees, and they uh, and you hear the pine warblers uh, singing their little rattle call uh, uh, in the, from the trees. I'm, every time I'm there, I hear pine warblers. I visit quite a bit um, in, uh, to North Carolina. So uh, the, the, it, they will visit uh, feeders occasionally in migration. My brother took a picture of one of his, of his feeders in Kentucky one year. Uh, so and they do. We get we get pictures from them all the way up into New England sometimes where they they'll they'll visit, especially when they come in when it's really cold in the spring. They're still they'll they'll hit those feeders. And again, down in the southeast, they they occasionally. And a lot of people don't know what they are. Uh, 
uh, that, uh, that sometimes they'll be misidentified. They just think they're a goldfinch because, uh, you know, they're at their feeders and especially their sunflower chip feeders and they have yellow uh, on them, but they don't have, and again, winter plumage goldfinches, uh, it, it's, it's pretty similar, but we look for these guys uh, at your feeders down there. You may be surprised as you actually have them. Um, and here's a bird that is not, well, I get they, they could come to feeders, but they typically don't. Um, it is you know it's symbolic of the South. Okay, everybody goes, wait a minute, I got crows where I'm at. I'm all over you. Yes, now this is the fish crow. Uh, and it is a very Southern bird. Now, again, in the past many years, they have been creeping North. We we actually get them in the Kansas City region now. Uh, not still, still not in big numbers, but we do, we get them here. And uh, the absolute best way to tell them from an American crow, because you have both of them down there, is by their calls. And here is what they sound like. And again, I use uh, Sibley's app to birding, it had the birds, and this is where the songs come from. And I'll put it in the description below. Um, but they, they're known for their two note call. This is what we listen for up here in our area, but they, you can hear this all the time. There's two different ways to recognize it. Now, again, young American crows will do that two-note call, and, and it can be very nasally. You notice how that is, whereas American crows typically is that caw, caw, caw. Uh, this is what the call type sound like. Fish crows are much more nasally, and I say they even sound frog-like to me whenever they call uh, down there. And they're, they're again, widespread all over the southeast, and they'll sometimes be under your feeders, but most of the time they're up in the trees and they're scavenging and they're, you know, if you, uh, they're going through if you, your trash cans and stuff like that. Uh, the, the crows, they're famous for that. They're true scavengers. And the bird of prey of the southeast is easily the red-shouldered hawk. Red-shouldered hawks are all over the southeast. And they're, again, they're moving north. We, we have a lot more here in Kansas City than we used to. But they are the bird of, of, of prey down there. I mean, yes, you got red-tailed hawks and you have kestrels and things like that. But the most prevalent and most widely seen is the red-shouldered hawk. Now, you guys down in Florida, your red-shouldered hawks are much paler than this. They are very gray in the head and, and, the, and, and the chest. It's not nearly as vibrant red as the true eastern population over most of the southeast. But I always say that the ones in uh, Florida look like they're sun bleached down in that area. So, and they, you know, they don't hunt birds. They hit, hunt snakes and lizards and, uh, and they spend a lot of time in, in watery areas, which is the southeast has a lot of swamps. So, but they are becoming more common in backyards and people see them and they are a great bird of curiosity. So uh, the Southeast is near and dear to my heart. Actually, I spent the first 30 years of my life down there. So the birds are, I, I, I love them. I love this trip uh, through these birds because it reminds me so much of my time there. So uh, we're going to do more of these. We are going to you know, cover uh, other parts of the country. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the program, you know, would you please give us a like, give us a share, give a thumbs up. Uh, if you uh, haven't subscribed yet here on YouTube, I, I really would. It helps us and we can continue to do these kind of programs. So thanks for tuning in. Until next time, let's talk birds.